Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Stephen Ellistad. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media for great production content. So I just recently finished up a fairly in-depth course for ADSR called Creative Automation in Logic Pro X. And as I was working on it, I kept thinking of things that I really wanted to include, just didn't have time for because the course is really more about big picture workflows and really diving into different aspects of automation as far as working on a song. And I didn't really have time to get into some of these little detailed tricks, but I figured that'd be a good fit for some tutorials. And so I just did one about creating movement with automation. And I realized that we can also create movement. One thing Logic doesn't actually have is built-in automation templates to modify. And I think automation is just such a powerful tool for manipulating sound. I spent some time really just trying to, to learn all the little ways that we can manipulate and kind of work around some, some stuff in Logic with automation. And I actually found a couple of things on the web that kind of pointed me in the right direction and came up with a method of adding all kinds of patterns and manipulating them. And it takes advantage of the whole fact that we can move between region and track based automation that lets us kind of store automation patterns inside of empty MIDI tracks. To that end, I have here a hidden track that is a folder stack called Auto Temp. It has a number of different basic patterns. And if I open this up a little bit, currently it's on display off each of these. If I flip over to automation, we can see that we've got different automation patterns. And you can make all kinds of automation patterns, but quite honestly, these five are really the only ones you need once you can manipulate the rest. From the other automation tutorial I just did, we have this basic chord pad. Not a whole lot going on, but it's a pretty fun way to manipulate this. Let's go into automation mode here. One thing we can do in automation mode is first we can switch our view between track and region, and then we can choose our different parameters or just turn the display off to look at the MIDI region or audio file, whatever it may be. And of course we can set our mode here. But over here now we have these as region data. This is how I approach it. First thing I want to do is duplicate that track. So I've got the exact same track with the exact same parameters, plugins, whatnot. Okay, so I rearranged a bit so hopefully it's a little easier to see. And what we've got in here is when we're not in automation mode, it's just going to show us our approximate look at what the, the data that's on that MIDI track is, and it's just automation data. Of course, we just see the MIDI notes here on the pad. When I flip over instead to actual automation mode, remember we have two different views. We have our region view and our track view. Currently, we're looking at track view. If I select these and switch them to region view, we can actually see that data. The automation data is written in the region. So if we want to manipulate this, we're going to need to do a little bit of trickeration here. We can only manipulate it in one way when it's on track and in another way when it's on the region. And we need both to be able to use these effectively. Currently on this one, we have nothing. I've deleted everything. And let's say we want to work on some kind of volume swell or panning or something. I can copy this over. I need to copy it over to this exact copy of this track. Remember, this, this has the same inputs, outputs, assignments, and everything. To do that, I need to first copy and paste flip back over. We want this to be this correct length, so we'll maybe say we'll copy it option drag four times. I can just now hold down option and click track and now that data has converted to track data. And now I can copy and paste this. So if I shift select the actual data, I can copy and paste it as now track data and because that is all good to go, now I can just select it. And once I copy that, it really helps actually to be here in either bar or beat, depending on how tight you need to go. We're gonna go down to bar and also make sure snap automation is on and snap regions to absolute value. Marquee drop and paste. The only places it looks a little odd is because it's not translated all the way at the end. So you can see we just need to click that. And now once we have this in here, we have a couple things we can do. Why don't we just select it with the marquee? Because we're on track data, there's nothing on the region. But if I now select that and option click it, moving track automation to region automation, boom. That gives me a couple of more things we can do. One thing you'll notice is this is inverted here, and that's why we have this odd little bit going on. So if we come back and undo a bunch of this, so the one thing that we want to make sure, let's go down to the beat level and see how that's going to do for us. I like to drop a point at the nearest subdivision and then I shift select because that lets me grab across the nodes. And now when I do that, I just need to come up on the beat. I'm locked in and that works fine. That'll come in directly on. So leaving that extra node there to copy and paste. It looks a little different because we have that height. When we come down here, we can see it's exactly the same. While we have this now, we've copied and pasted from a template. That works great. 
now I got a nice clean set of lines. Now these guys are extra. And so there you go. You got an empty, empty section there. So when we have this selected now, a couple of ways we can manipulate this. First of all, if we just mark he selected, we can grab the nodes and we can stretch like that. See, we get a couple different variations. But let's listen to this now and see what we got. Pretty cool. I definitely like that. But if we want to create any other manipulation, we need to come through here and once again turn that back. Now it is region automation. And say we want to chop that. We're going to split that. And now we'll get out of automation mode. A lot of people don't realize we can certainly drag and we can trim off like that. But if you hold down option, it's going to double that up. We can do that again. Now we're left with this. So I'm sure you can think of some uses for that. It's a pretty cool way to work. Right, let's go ahead and get rid of these guys for right now. We don't need them. We're going to keep on, keep on keeping on here. So that's on our region volume. We can also come down here and copy, say, something else. Let's try our mute. I'm just going to make sure we're on the region. I'm going to copy that and we'll come down and paste. And now with this one, a little different. I'm going to drag it again. And this says volume, but we want to put this on mute. And so we've got our two things here. And what we're going to need to do, the square one especially because of the way it joins up, it's often better maybe not copy that and instead just convert it over. And make sure we go back to volume. And we see what happens. It doesn't like that. So it doesn't know how to handle it. So it converts it the old way. And instead, shift select. We're going to hold down option. And now we're going to choose mute. It's going to ask us do we want to convert it or copy it. And I say copy and convert. And now we have a true mute. And so now I have that. And again, convert it to track and just by option clicking. So now I've got this. Again, I'm going to come in and drop a point. And with this one, I'm going to bring it down like that. So now we have true full automation that I can select. So I'm going to shift select, copy. And I'm going to open up a lane. Let's say that to be mute. Boom, and paste. Now it is not lined up correctly because of that extra dot. So I come in on that beat and paste it. It does line up correct. So either way, it can work just fine. And now when I hit play, and if we want to convert it back to region, now that it's on the region data, we can manipulate it just fine outside of auto mode again. I want to chop it, split it, shorten it up, option drag. So we can do some really cool stuff with this and hopefully you experiment with it a little bit. There's all kinds of things that we can do to just flip things over. So again, it's always just a matter of shift selecting, say converting it over to something else. Now we've got it as pan data. But because of that, we're going to need to kind of play with it as well. And if we need to make any adjustments, it's a pretty simple thing to do. One of the, the neat things that we can do is once we convert this over again, option click it, I go look at our pan. Just like that. Another cool thing is if we do shift select, shift select and click not on the nodes, so we can come in here and do a couple different things. We can come in and grab it on the nodes. And start flipping it around as well. So it's a matter of are we selecting it with a shift select or a regular select? And then what do we want to do with that data once we've got it selected? I like to experiment with things like this, changing your width over time into something maybe a little more extravagant. But there we go. If we look at also our mute data and our volume data, and we got all kinds of crazy stuff going on just based upon patterns.
So hopefully you got something good out of this tutorial and you'll find some ways to put it into your own music. I'm Stephen Ellistead for ADSR. Thanks a lot and make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel. And if you find this stuff interesting, check out my course, Creative Automation and Logic Pro X. Thanks. Have a great day.